it's a school that's been around in Glasgow in this area for over 90 years. It's a, a well-established school. The families in the school have a real affinity with St Rocks and they identify with the school uh, to a great extent. Uh, the benefit of that is that for us and our pupils, we've got parents and grandparents who are all pupils at the school, so there's a real feeling of belonging to something when the pupils come into St Rocks. Almost 90% of our pupils are in SIMD 1 or 2, which is the 20% most deprived postcodes in Scotland. And, and the, the fairly small number that we have out with those two uh, deciles really come from uh, outlying areas to come into St Rocks because of, for example, our deaf provision, where we'll have deaf pupils travelling from across Glasgow or from out with the Glasgow area uh, into the school for that. So uh, an area where um, the families are dealing with very, very difficult, challenging uh, situations on a, on a daily basis. And that's a backdrop to uh, a lot of our pupils' lives. Uh, and for many of our young people, the, the fact that they can get here every day and get here ready to work and ready to learn uh, is a, a huge step and, and is a real major success in itself. Exclusion from school would only be an absolute last resort and um, it's easy to say that but the evidence shows that because in the last four or five years our uh, figures for pupils being excluded have been in single digits for the whole year, for the whole school. Um, last year I think it was four, it's varied between maybe four, six, seven over the last four or five years. Um, whereas previously in many Glasgow schools the figures for pupils being excluded were 10 times, 20 times that figure. So the, the evidence shows that we are working in a way where exclusion for us is not an option. That's, we, we, that's the, the default position is we don't exclude pupils. It doesn't resolve any issues, it just kicks it down the street a wee bit and the issues that caused the problem there are still going to be there in two days or three days or four days. So for us, that's not a solution. It doesn't fix anything, it doesn't make anything better. Uh, in fact, when the pupil then comes back in, having missed another three, four days of schooling, then they are then behind their class. And so you've got to add that problem and that barrier onto whatever issue there was, whatever barrier there was. Exclusion is a cycle of failure and we want to break that cycle. And, and we do that by adopting a, an inclusive approach and a supportive approach. There are lots and lots of ways in which we do that. Um, for example, uh, attendance we think is the single most important factor in terms of engagement and attainment for pupils because if they're not in school, they're not learning. So for us, uh, attendance is a big, big issue and for maybe the last seven, eight years we've been among the top two or three attended schools in Glasgow. A school of 600 teenagers, so you know, incidents do happen like they do in all schools, but the starting point is to have a positive climate in the school and, and a calm atmosphere in the school because that feeds into positive relationships. And so what we, we achieve through that is that although there are incidents, they tend to be infrequent. They are few and far between. And so they're much easier to deal with because everybody involved, the teacher, the young person, the parent, everybody involved can see that it's an unusual situation. That gives a starting point for a conversation then. So why is that? Why did that happen? You know, what was the problem there? And then talk through it. And, and if you talk to people, including young people, and you listen to them, then I think that's a big part of the battle. Then you can resolve issues. You can identify what an issue is and then find a way to come together to make it better. I think that's really what it comes down to. Every year, um, all schools have to account for the, the destinations of the pupils moving on from the school, whether that's to university or college or a job or a, a place in a training programme. These are all positive destinations as opposed to being unemployed, either unemployed seeking work or not seeking work, which are negative destinations. And we've been working really hard in the school to achieve 100% positive destinations, which as you would imagine is hugely challenging uh, and some would say is impossible. And therefore it's really, really important that while the pupil is in school, that we're working hard to get them into the right destination for that pupil. If 
we have supports that are in place for most pupils, we are failing. We have to have supports that are in there for the pupils of our school, every single one of them. And some of them need more support than others. Some of them need very little support in terms of getting through school and achieving really well, and that's fantastic. And other schools need a lot more. And there's been a big push, of course, in Glasgow and beyond about equity. And it's not about giving everyone the same level of support or the same supports. It's about giving everybody the right level of support and the right support for them to overcome the barriers and the issues that they face. So the Nurture Programme, and we have got specially trained staff who, who implement that programme, will support young people whose home lives may be very challenging uh, or for whom school itself is a real challenge and they need some extra support. And that might be a broad support of life skills. They come in in the morning, they maybe have some breakfast, the chance to, to relax a wee bit before school and to get themselves into a good frame of mind to learn, into a positive frame of mind to learn for that day. It might be that there are some subjects that some pupils find extremely difficult or too much of a challenge and we can withdraw them from certain subjects and give them extra support in certain other subjects where they will do well with that wee bit more support or it might be that they come out and they have some individual time and support time that is structured carefully and with a programme based around what their particular needs are. We also have a programme um, for our younger pupils called CIA, Children's Intelligence Agency it is, and it's for pupils who are particular high achievers and so it's to support them and really stretch them and it might be some after school work in certain subject areas uh, or in a broader sense, general support time for them. Our school and all schools in Glasgow and across Scotland qualify for funding from the Pupil Equity Fund and it's a, an amount of money which is given to schools based on the level of deprivation faced by the pupils in that school and in that area and, and the, the rationale behind the, the PEF funding as it's called is that it's an attempt to reduce the poverty related attainment gap across the country because for years um, it's been evident that pupils from more affluent backgrounds tend to perform better and then have better opportunities in school and beyond school. Part of that might be, for example, bringing more staffing in because there's always that concern about is this more work and how we're already working so hard, how can you ask us to do something else? One way that we can try and, and cushion that effect is to bring in extra members of staff, for example, to work for two days a week and through bringing that member of staff in you can increase capacity in a particular subject area, maybe enable you to split classes and have smaller groups or to extract pupils who are just on the cusp of uh, two different levels to try and give them that extra support. We have a really strong system of pastoral care in the school. We have a horizontal system which means that we have a pastoral care teacher responsible for all pupils in a certain level. So we have a one pastoral care teacher for all pupils in S1 and S2. Another pastoral care colleague looks after pupils in S3 and S4. So that's pupils coming to the end of their BGE, which is a broad general education, and into the senior phase, which starts in S4. And we have one looking at S5 and S6, and that pastoral care teacher will have um, responsibility for supporting those pupils as they move towards the end of their time in school and then a real focus on positive destinations and transition support work for college, university courses and so on. We also have an extra 0.6 pastoral care teacher who will have specific areas of responsibility, not a caseload in the same way as the other teachers do, but maybe an, an overview of, for example, the nurture provision in school or looking after our care experienced young people. We have a, an extensive deaf provision in the school and it's Glasgow specialist deaf provision and last year the figure was maybe about 38, 39, maybe about 35 deaf pupils at the moment and that will be pupils who have a, a range of hearing impairment. They may be for example profoundly deaf, in most cases they're not profoundly deaf but they have hearing loss to different degrees. Uh, the great thing for those pupils is they can come to St Rock's and be part of 
a mainstream environment, so they have specialist support within the mainstream environment. Some of those pupils will receive their teaching and learning in small groups within the deaf ed department, but most of those pupils will access at least part of their curriculum in mainstream classes with support. The great thing for those pupils is they are accessing a mainstream education provision with all of the supports that we have in place and the, the breadth of opportunities that that will present to pupils. But for all of our pupils, our hearing pupils especially, then it, it raises awareness and issues around tolerance and acceptance and inclusion, and inclusion is one of our school values. The key, I think, to having a, an inclusive, a genuinely inclusive school is the relationships and the emphasis on building strong relationships in the school. It means you have uh, teachers and support staff who are working hard with young people and with families. You have young people who love the school. You have parents and carers who wouldn't dream of sending their children to any other school because they actually love the school. So there's a lot to be said for that. So a school which is respectful, which listens to people, which has strong relationships at its core, gives you the chance of having a really strong, successful school uh, and hopefully a school where people enjoy coming and they use as a platform to a really great life beyond school. Mm -hmm.